the first time, and this again is controversial, we're going to be willing to hire non-certified teachers in core subject areas because there's lots of evidence that especially for minority teachers, they don't go through schools of education to the degree if they're high-end, coming out of good schools with good grades, um, they're apt to go into Teach for America, which does not require certifications. You know, Teach for America this year, 20% of Ivy League graduates applied for Teach for America. I mean, so there's a lot of kids who are very bright and very educated. So that is a part of the plan. You can imagine how some people feel about that, but it's part of it. Develop this little nobule. I get very tired politically of people that like to put everything on the union. This is my biggest point of embarrassment. Tenure is not a collective bargaining agreed upon thing. Tenure is state law. I don't know if you all realize that. The state requires a tenure law. After three years, we tenure people. Now, one would think a well-managed school system would treat that decision as a milestone. Very carefully examine the credentials of teachers who are about to be granted tenure. We, like unfortunately most of our compatriots, have not been treated like a milestone. In fact, most of our principals haven't even been informed when teachers are up for tenure. We are now going to require that teachers have shown the ability to move student achievement before granting tenure. And one of the ideas we came up with, which I kind of like, is Dr. Lane's idea, is we're also going to take a photograph of every principal with every teacher that they grant tenure to for both of their fives. So they both own that decision together. That principal deemed that teacher worthy of tenure in the Pittsburgh Public Schools, worthy of teaching our students, our kids. They need to own that decision. And we need to provide them that data. Tenure has never been an imposition of the union on the district. It is our own issue and we need to deal with it aggressively. Differentiated roles and reward. I'll get to them more as we, as we go along, but this plan creates the opportunity for highly effective teachers to go into particular roles where we need the most and make more money. This system will also reward very highly effective teachers for moving student achievement at high levels. Okay, so basically it's three buckets. Increase the number of highly effective teachers. I haven't spoken about the second, but increase the exposure of high-need students to highly effective teachers and ensure teachers and students are working in good learning environments. We, when we had to make our presentation, we all went out to Seattle, and I will tell you, it was, I mean, if you know part of my background, as I, I did run for governor, I was a Democratic nominee, and I remember I was less nervous for my televised debates in my race for governor than I was before we went on stage to give our final presentation to the Gates folks in Seattle. Um, and we had half an hour. And so one of the things we tried to do to be different, and we were lucky, there were 10 districts presenting, we were last, which helped a lot. But we tried to personalize it to a real girl, Jade, a fourth grader. As you know, in many of our schools now, teachers are asking kids to write about their dreams and their aspirations and tie it into the promise. So Jay wrote about her desire to be a pediatrician. So we know that if Jade is going to be, in fact, able to meet her goal, she's going to need an effective or a highly effective teacher every single year of her school. She's not going to get there otherwise. So we personalized it to that. I've already spoke about RISE and VAM. At this point during the Gates presentation, I turned it over to Dr. Lane, so there's a little repetition here. So unless, I mean, if you feel, I won't go through that again. Okay, and recruit. Again, identify the right attributes, hire early, cast a far broader net. We're gonna spend a lot of time and effort recruiting, because again, think back to that slide on how, highly, how many highly effective teachers and effective teachers we need. It means that of the new teachers we hire, we need to be right about 80 to 90 percent of the time. We can't be wrong very often. When we are wrong, we've got to identify pretender. Those are the only ways we're going to be successful. The biggest financial component of the proposal is the Teachers Academy. 
and we will have several. And the point is this, even very accomplished students coming out of education school are not really ready to be ready to be thrown into a classroom as a teacher of record. So we will not do that anymore. In real schools, and they will be challenging schools, we will have some of our master teachers teaching and we will have our incoming teachers be mentored by them before their classroom of record teachers. And that extends the tenure process to four years, by the way. Because this first year will not count towards tenure. And they will be working with a master teacher who has proved that they're highly effective at moving student achievement. And they will be learning their craft. If you think about it, I think when we look back on the fact that we used to just take people and throw them into, I mean, remember, many new teachers get some of our most difficult and challenging classrooms. And they get like a three-day induction period. It's, it doesn't, it never made sense. The problem with this always was, remember, you guys have been here a lot longer than me, right? We used to have teachers' academies here. Shenley, um, I think. Banksville. Uh, where? Banksville. Banksville and uh, Brookline. Yeah. Brookline. And they were slightly different from what we'll be creating, but, you know, like in many things, money got tight and away they went. We can't allow that to happen. Oh, you went too far. Okay, so career ladder roles. You know, folks, you guys are pretty intimate with our data. Um, you know, and let me tell you something. The Gates people, if you think, you know, I get analyzed by outside folks occasionally in our data. If you think that you guys have been sophisticated looking at our data, or anybody has, they knew our data so well, I can't even begin to tell you how well they knew it. We know where our problem is is, and our problem is high school. Uh, we're not alone, um, but um, we are not in any way remotely satisfied with what is happening in terms of improving education in high school. So we spend a lot of time, not just in this process, but in large roles, examining what's wrong. What's wrong? <clears throat> there, there, there are many things that are wrong, but one of the things we realize is we make a philosophical and institutional mistake that somehow ninth graders are not in need of the same kind of nurturing and love and particular attention that third graders are. We really have come to believe that we could have the same kind of culture in ninth grade that we have in third grade, our results would be a lot better. So then how do you do that? High school teachers as a whole are somewhat different from elementary and middle school teachers. The reasons they got into teaching are somewhat different. They may be far more interested in subject matter, right? And some of them you know, we need, um, uh, and I, I'm going to phrase this carefully, but, you know, we need to create a culture where we understand we're teaching students, not subjects. That sounds glib, but it's got meaning to it. So, what did we do? We, we, we know also that we don't have enough quality teaching in ninth grade. Ninth grade, by the way, is where the rubber meets the road. We all know that, right? So, we will create a ninth and tenth grade teacher excellence core. We also will create cohorts of teachers working together who will be incentivized to see their kids to 11th grade ready for 11th grade. In other words, the whole cohort, and it will probably include counselors, it's not fully mapped out yet, and other people, but they will meet once a day to discuss the students in their cohort. Has Johnny been coming to school? No, Johnny hasn't. Why not? Who's on top of it? You know, I've been having trouble with Susie in my class. How's Susie been doing in your class? Well, she's been doing better. Well, can you help me? This is an attempt to systematize a personalized environment. It, it, it will mean that our core subject area teachers will loop in ninth and 10th grade with their students. And this has not all been fully mapped out, but it was a key component of it. Now, we were going to do that in year one, and we backed away. And the reason being that right now we don't want to play the game of robbing Peter to pay Paul and taking our teachers who are most successful in the later grades and just moving them into the earlier grades. By the way, we also uh, do not believe the supposition that just because you're a successful 12th grade calculus teacher, you would necessarily be very successful teaching Algebra 1 to 9th grades. It doesn't correlate necessarily. So we want to do